Hi folks, and today we're going to have a look at making your first recording in our door. So it's going to take you from the basics, just uh, getting our door open, uh, setting up your project, and just we're going to stop once we've made the first recording. So I'll just start the screencast here. I'm trying to find my jack. Um, I'll just quickly review my settings on jack here. I've uh, disconnected Pulse Audio, as you can see over there, and uh, setup-wise, I'm running a latency of 11.6 milliseconds. Uh, unfortunately, there's no easy way to to get a, a, a sort of a, a best jack configuration. You're going to have to experiment with it. On my Guitarix tutorial, I was using a latency of 5.6 milliseconds or something around there, and I found just through experimentation that uh, with just the one in, one out, the guitar in, the guitar coming back out. Uh, I, it can run at that, even on this old computer, it can run at that without too much trouble. What I've found is that uh, with our door, if, it's, if, if we're doing something very, very simple, just recording one thing and listening back to one thing, 5.6 milliseconds it will be fine. Um, but as soon as we start doing more than that, multiple tracks or plugins or whatever, um, then I really need to up the latency to achieve stability. 11.6 uh, milliseconds seems to be fine for most things. I go to a different desktop here. I like to have Jack on one desktop and Ardor on another. And I launch Ardor. When you launch Ardor for the first time, you'll see a different dialogue from this. You'll see a sort of a first launch dialogue. Uh, when uh, I had first installed Ardor 3, there was a bug on my copy. And I saw the first launch, the first run dialogue, every single time I uh, ran it. Uh, that's solved itself. I don't know what what's happened to solve that. I don't think it's anything I've done, I think it's just solved itself. Um, so, you've got two options, create a new session, that's what we're going to do. Open an existing session, um, we'll show you things that you've done before if you want. So, one really important thing with this kind of work is uh, folder structure. Uh, if you just drop this in your music folder, our door will create a whole mess of folders within that. Then, if you create a new project, you're you run the risk of Ardor creating the same folders for the new folder within the master folder, if that makes sense. And you can quickly get into a mess. So, you need, um, I'd recommend anyway, an Ardor projects folder, and within that, um, folders for each project that you do. Um, I'm going to call this session Screencast Test, just something like that, and I'm going to choose the folder where I want it. I'm going to put it in our door sessions. I'm going to create myself a new folder in there. I'm going to call it screencast test. And that's it. Um, I'm not going to use any templates. That will be a future tutorial there. Because this computer is a little bit slow, uh, it's going to take a little time. Now, uh, while it's taking time, I've just mentioned uh, you you can set up our door in such a way that it will take care of Jack for you. You can set it up in such a way that it would guess a decent configuration for Jack and start Jack as it started. Uh, personally, I believe that it's good to know something of what's happening in the background. Um, so if you've not looked at my Jack tutorials, I would suggest you do that or find some Jack tutorials anyway. Um, this is what it looks like uh, as it starts up. I happen to have it set up like this already. It doesn't always uh, come up the way I like it. Sometimes it, it will come up with just the one um, project window over on the laptop screen. But I always set it up like this. I like the project window over here on the big secondary monitor and a mixer, the mixer, over here on my main laptop monitor. Um, on running it, I have over here a mixer strip you can show or hide that with uh, Shift E. So Shift E hides it, Shift E gets it back again. We've just got one track which is Master. This is actually the Master Bus and the default behaviour of our door is for every audio track um, to go to the Master Bus and for the, our door will default to guessing a good output source for the Master Bus. So by default Ardor has connected the master bus to outputs one and two of my sound card. For probably mo most situations, that's going to be what you want. So the default behaviour is is fine to leave. Obviously, there are situations when you might want to change that, and you can. 
So, we're going to record a little guitar track here. Uh, I'm going to get a new track up then, so I'm going to right click in this grey space here. And it brings up the add track or bus dialog. There are different types of tracks that you can add. Uh, we're just going to be concerned with an audio track for the moment. I'm only going to want to add one, but you can add multiples. If you're only adding one, it's a nice idea to name your track right now. Um, if you're adding more than one, obviously you'll need to do that later. And the track configuration, this is really important. Uh, when I was teacher training, uh, I was involved in some A-level music tech, and there was a, a girl there, she'd recorded a project, and she'd recorded maybe 16, 18 tracks, whatever it was. She'd done every single track in stereo. She was using Cubase, and it defaulted to a stereo track. None of the things that she'd recorded were actually stereo instruments, so um, she, at the time there was no, no fix for this in Cubase, so um, she pretty much had to start again. She put hours and hours into it, so don't make that mistake. Think about what you're recording, think about whether it's a mono or a stereo sound source. I've got my guitar, it's one single thing, it's a mono sound source, so I'm going to choose a mono track. The examples of stereo tracks would be my keyboard, um, so it has a stereo output, so I would take that to a stereo input on my sound card, and I would need a stereo track for that. I've also got a MIDI drum machine that I use, well, it's a, a general MIDI box, really, and that's got a stereo output, so again, I would choose a stereo track for that. Um, basically, if you've, if you've got an electronic instrument, and you've got a left and a right, then you, you are going to have a stereo track. Um, if you've got a single microphone, a single guitar, or even if you've got two guitars, you're going to want to make two mono tracks, not one stereo track. If, you, if you're recording a choir, um, I do this sometimes, and you're using a pair of microphones um, in, a, in a cross pattern or, or out here or whatever, then you would probably have a single stereo track and have one microphone panned one side and the other microphone panned the other. So, there's my mono track. I'm going to add that. Um, I'm going to click on the track that I've just created, and that's going to show its properties over here in my mixer strip. Um, we can see where it's outputting. It's outputting to the master bus. That's fine. That's what I want. We can see where, it's, where the input is coming from. At the moment, there is no input. There are two ways that you can set the input. You can left-click on here, and it brings up this um, sort of input matrix, if you like, matrix. And um, we can go over here, our input sources, and over here is um, the, the track that, that I've got. If it was a stereo track, there would be two things there. This is just a mono track, so it's a guitar input. I'm going to click on Other, and this is going to show every single sound source that Jack sees. Uh, I happen to know that my guitar is uh, coming into input number four, which is showing up here as line in three and four right. So if I click in there, I'm immediately I've started hearing the, the buzz. And if I strum my guitar, you'll see, well, for a start, we'll hear it. Um, I've got my desk set up so that it's just hearing the sound card. Um, so I'm monitoring via our door. Uh, you, you'll see the, the fader going up and down there, so you'll confirm that you've got input in. The other way that you can select input, and this is my favourite way, this is how it, you were limited to this way on order, order 2, I find this simpler. If you right click, you get some options for where you want the input to come from. This is, I find this simpler, this is the way I would normally use it. Um, the matrix offers a little bit more flexibility. Um, so if, for example, you wanted to record, a tr if you wanted a track that was actually taking input from, uh, you know, Guitarix or or a plug-in that you've got running or something like that, then the matrix is probably going to be more flexible for you. There we are, we can see that there's some noise coming in there. Um, to make a recording, we need to arm the track, and then we can shift R to toggle record on and off. Shift R toggles that on and off there. And then we can press play. And uh, space. A 
said uh, press play before, and I meant to say press space, uh, it's the same thing actually. You could use these controls up here. Um, it'd be nice to think that we're aiming to be a power user, so uh, keyboard shortcuts whenever possible. The default behaviour of our door is that once you've pressed space or, or pressed um, stop, uh, to stop the recording, the record enable is still toggled on there, so shift R will turn that off, or you might want to be extra safe and disarm the track. You can, um, there's one more shortcut I want to show you here, which is um, shift space, and that will start recording whether record is enabled or not. So I'm going to press uh, shift space and I'm going to crack straight on here. <laughs> What I should have done there, uh, I'll demonstrate this now actually, is uh, if, like I've just done there, I've forgotten what I was going to play and uh, the recording is no good, what I can do is I can do control space to stop playback. That will stop playback and delete the last recording. So I'll try that now. I'm going to press space again. The record's on already enabled, so that's going to record. <laughs> mistake, control space will get rid of that for me. So what we've done there, there we go. what we've done there is we've made our first recording in our door, we've um, connected inputs to the track, we've created a track to do that. Um, we've seen some important shortcuts straight away. Shift R to toggle record enable on and off, Shift E to toggle the mixer strip down the side, space to play and stop, shift space to start recording if record enable isn't toggled on, and control space to stop recording and destroy the last recording if you want to. I hope that's been useful, see you next time for more.